Today I'm demonstrating how to use the Vernier UV-Vis spectrophotometer. When you purchase the spectrometer, it comes in this nice carrying case. And inside is the spectrophotometer, an AC power supply, a USB cable that connects the spectrometer to a computer or to a LabQuest, and a set of two Starna quartz cuvettes. These are the cuvettes that you're going to want to be using for experiments like I'm demonstrating today. To begin using the UV-Vis spectrophotometer, first make sure the AC power is connected, and then make sure the power switch is in the on position, and then plug the USB cable into your computer or your LabQuest. Before you begin, you're going to want to make sure that your Logger Pro version installed on your computer is 3862 or higher. I'm going to be demonstrating today on a computer, so I've plugged my USB cable into my computer, and now I'm ready to go. So to begin, there are three different modes for the UV-Vis spectrometer. First is absorbance, and that's what's on by default. So when I open Logger Pro, I should see a graph of absorbance versus wavelength. I can also put it in tr percent transmission mode or intensity mode for measuring emissions. To switch between the different modes, you'll want to select from the experiment menu, setup sensors, spectrometer one. This brings up the spectrometer dialog box. Here you'll want to select the rainbow icon to select between the different modes, percent transmission, intensity, and absorbance. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be using absorbance mode, so I'll leave it there. The first thing you want to do in absorbance mode or percent transmittance mode is calibrate the spectrometer. That option is also available in the menu we're currently in. So if I tap on Calibrate, it brings up a separate dialog box for calibration. It requires you wait a minimum of 90 seconds before calibrating. We recommend you wait about 10 minutes. It's also good practice to calibrate right before you take data. It allows the lamp to warm up as long as possible and stabilize as much as possible. Once the Finish Calibration button is available, then I'm going to put my blank sample into the spectrometer. Today I'm just measuring the absorbance of aspirin samples, so my blank is water. Select the Finish Calibration button. It'll take a few seconds. And then I select the OK button. Now I can close out of this dialog box and I'm ready to take data. There's three different types of data collection modes in absorbance. The first is absorbance versus wavelength, which generates a spectrum. The second is absorbance versus concentration, which generates a Beer's Law experiment. And the third is absorbance versus time, which is for kinetics experiment. To first take a spectrum, I'm going to put my absorbing sample in the spectrometer and then press the collect button. I should see my spectrum right away. Once I'm happy with my spectrum, I select the stop button. And now I want to zoom in on this peak a little bit more, so I do that by tapping on the x-axis and typing in what I want my new um, range to be. So now I want to do a Beer's Law experiment at the wavelength of the peak absorbance here for aspirin. So in order to do that, I tap on this rainbow icon that's about in the middle of the toolbar. It's also the configure spectrometer icon. It brings up this dialog box, and you can see the three different modes of data collection here. I want to select the third one, absorbance versus concentration where the column name and units are already filled in. You can edit these fields if you like. The wavelength that is first selected is automatically going to be the highest absorbing wavelength. 
For this experiment, we don't want to use that. We actually want to use this peak in here. So I can select that peak either by tapping on the graph or by manually choosing from the list of wavelengths. And then I select OK. It's going to ask me if I want to store my data. In this case, I do so that I can see the spectrum on top of my Beer's Law data. So now I'm ready to take my Beer's Law data, tapping on the Collect button, and no data has been recorded yet. Now I have this new Keep button next to it. When this absorbance value in the lower corner is stable, I'm going to tap on the Keep button and then type my concentration in. Now I'm going to switch samples, wait for the absorbance value to stabilize, and then select Keep again. Put in my third sample, select keep once the value has stabilized, and type in the concentration. I also want to make sure I get my blank value recorded. And then once I'm done with all my samples, I press Stop Collection. Then it will automatically auto-scale my data, so I see my data will fit nicely to a line like it should with a Beer's Law analysis. And then I can do a linear fit right within Logger Pro to get my slope and y-intercept to calculate an extinction coefficient. If I want to do kinetics experiment with this sample, I can go back to the Configure Spectrometer dialog box and select Absorbance versus Time. I can keep the same wavelength or select a new one. Select OK. In this case, I'm not going to store the data, but of course I can. And then I have an Absorbance versus Time kinetic trace. The default settings for a kinetics trace are one every 200 seconds. To change this, I tap on the data collection icon up here next to the collect button, which brings up the data collection dialog box, and I can change the duration and the sampling rate. To see the instructions for everything I've just explained, experiment ideas, and the full specifications for the UV-Vis spectrophotometer, please go to our website. If you have any additional questions, email chemistry at vernier.com.